Hello and good morning friends, welcome to the CEC Edeset live lecture. Dear friends, as you know that, uh, that very successfully we are uh, going on with our series on uh, financial accounting and so far we have uh, conducted 10 sessions on financial accounting. Uh, today this is the 11th lecture and today we would be discussing on trial balance and accounting errors. Under trial balance uh, we would be first of all discussing on understanding uh, trial balance objectives and functions preparing uh, trial balance uh, whereas in the other session that is the other half we would be discussing on accounting errors uh, and uh, under accounting errors we would be discussing on uh, accounting errors types of uh, errors uh, as well as uh, detection errors and for this very discussion we have once again within our studios Mr. MC Sharma. Mr. MC Sharma is uh, Associate Professor in Department of uh, Commerce Shaheed Bhagat Singh Evening College University of Delhi. So I would like to welcome our guest Mr. Sharma under whose guidance we would be discussing on trial balance and accounting errors. Hello sir, welcome hello, to the hello. Edisit Thank lecture. You, Thank you. Dear friends, uh, so far we have discussed in last few uh, lectures the accounting process. As you know the accounting process is starts from recording the business transactions in the books of original entry and uh, that is journal and subsidiary books. So, a business transaction is recorded either in journal or in a subsidiary book. After recording the business transactions, we need to classify them and this process is also known as posting transactions from journal into ledger. So, in last lectures we have discussed this journal and ledger. And the next step in this process is summarizing and this summarizing the step is preparing trial balance. So, in this session we shall discuss about the trial balance and how to prepare it and what is the importance of trial balance. As we know the accounting system is an information system and information system must provide the necessary information and uh, useful information and timely information. So, in that reference we need to prepare trial balance. Trial balance is the statement which is prepared with the help of ledger balances at the end of financial year or at any other date to find whether debit total agrees with credit total. So, it is the trial balance. So, uh, what we could understand from this definition uh, that trial balance is a list or a schedule of all accounts including cash and bank balances and it is prepared on a particular day. Usually it is prepared monthly, but it must be prepared at the end of the year. As we know that we want to uh, some information monthly or some fortnightly also we can prepare it weekly also we can prepare it. For example, in banks uh, the a weekly statement is prepared and this is sent to the RBI uh, on every Friday of every uh, week. So, uh, it depends upon the need of the organization that when the trial balance should be prepared. If it is required after a fortnight, we can prepare after a fortnight. So, trial balance is prepared by the different firms on the different interval. It may be quarterly, it may be half yearly, it may be yearly also. Then this trial balance basically is a method of checking or testing the accuracy of the transactions recorded in different books of original entry and their posting into ledger. It means that again we need to refer this accounting process 1 and 2. First process recording the business transactions into journal. Second process step in the accounting process posting the transactions into ledger. 
So, what we find if there is any error either in journal or in ledger, it may create problem, it may not provide the true and fair information, accounting information. So, what is important? This third step is definitely very important. Uh, we need to prepare the trial balance. So, it is a list of all ledger accounts. It is not an account. It is a statement or a list of all ledger accounts including cash balance and bank balance. So, uh, we will see uh, how this uh, statement trial balance helps or what are its functions. The first most important objective or the function of this uh, tri statement is to test arithmetical accuracy. How we can uh, this calculate the arithmetical accuracy from trial balance? And in trial balance we see that we prepare a list with debit balance and credit balance. There are the two columns, one is the debit column and another credit column you will see in the format. And uh, when this total of this both columns tallies, then we could assume that that our uh, process that is the uh, recording and posting into ledger is correct. So, uh, when we prepare a trial balance and it is tallied, then it is a test of arithmetical accuracy. And if it is not tallied, then definitely there is some error. Secondly, it is a proof of that. Uh, double entry of each and every transaction has been made. We know that accounting system is known as double entry system. Every business transaction affects two accounts and postings are to be made or transactions are to be recorded in both the accounts. So, when we are recording in both the accounts, then the total of the debit side will tally the total of the credit side. So, by preparing this trial balance, we could provide a proof that our trial balance is tallied. It means we are following double entry system. It also provides summarized information of ledger accounts. Just for example, if a senior manager or the boss wants to know about the different items of expenditures. So, if we put before him the ledger ok sir all expenditure accounts are given in this ledger and you can go through and see. So, he has to go through uh, all the pages of the ledger and checks first which is the expense account, how much is balance is that. So, instead of putting that ledger before the manager, we could prepare a trial balance. Trial balance is the list of all accounts with their debit and credit balances. So, that list will provide him the summarized information. So, in that way, this is very important that the trial balance is very useful in providing the summarized information of all ledger accounts. When we want to prepare the financial statements or final statement, final statements are prepared on the basis of the ledger balances. The balances of nominal accounts are transferred from uh, ledger to nominal accounts that is the this uh, profit and loss account and trading account and profit and loss account while the assets accounts are shown in the balance sheet and carry to the next year. So, if we want to prepare the financial statements, the trial balance must be prepared before it. If we want to do some adjustments, we have already discussed adjustment entry which are to be made at the end of the year regarding outstanding expenses, then expenses paid in advance, accrued income, income received in advance, some interest outstanding or any other related item. So, after checking from the trial balance, we could notice that some adjustments are important. For example, the trial balance is showing the rent paid for 11 months only, while we use the building for the 12 months it means the rent for one month is outstanding and we need to make the adjustments. Similarly, if we have taken a loan and there is a loan balance of rupees 5 lakh in the trial balance and the 12 percent rate of interest is there and we have not paid any installment during the year. So, 60,000 rupees the interest must be paid. 
If the trial balance shows only the interest paid 40,000, it means the interest on loan rupees 20,000 is outstanding. So, in this way, the trial balance provides the summarized information and it can be interpreted and uh, analyzed and interpreted to know that whether some adjustments are required or not. Now, the question arises how to prepare the balance sheets. There are the three different methods which are used to prepare the balance sheet. The most popular method is the balance method. In this method, we prepare trial balance only by showing only balance of ledger accounts. So, balances of ledger accounts are recorded and it is also called net trial balance because the balance means the net balance of every account. If any account is showing the nil balance means there is no debit or credit balance then such account is not shown in the trial balance. Uh, we could see the format. This is the format of the trial balance under the balance method. First of all, we need to record name of the firm. Then in next line, trial balance as on particular date on which the trial balance is to be prepared. I have taken given here the imaginary date 31st March 2000 X1. Then we have the five columns. The first column is serial number. Second column is particulars in which we need to record the name of accounts. Next column is LF ledger folio. Ledger folio of the account from which folio we are bringing the account balance. If the account is showing debit balance then amount will be recorded in the debit column. And if the account is showing the credit balance, then it will be recorded in the credit column. And after recording all the accounts and their balances, we will uh, make a total and this total of the debit side must be tallied with the credit side. <coughs> Next method is total method. In this method, we are not uh, required to balance the ledger accounts. When we make the posting in ledger account, just we will have a total on the debit side and credit side. And we can carry forward this total into the list of trial balance. So, all ledger accounts without balancing them, only the total, the, it means the total will be if the both side transactions are there. There may be the balance uh, total on debit side and total on credit side. Both items shall be carried to the trial uh, balance. So, uh, it shows all the ledger accounts even it may not have the any balance because if the total of debit and credit is equal there will be no balance in ledger account. So, that is also to be shown in the trial balance in this method. So, if we see the format, format will be uh, name of the firm, then trial balance as on, serial number, particulars, ledger folio and debit total and credit total. So, here you need to record the total of an account on debit side and credit side. Again, the that is required the making total of trial balance and the total of debit side uh, must agree with the total of the credit side. <coughs> then we see the third method. Third method is called the balance and total method. So, basically this method is a combination of first and second method. Both methods have been combined. It means when we prepare the trial balance, we shall record all the ledger accounts, their balances and their total on debit side and credit side also. And uh, cash and bank balance also will be shown. So, even an account has a nil balance, we need to show it here because the totals are to be included. So, the format will be changed format will be four amount column. Uh, here serial number, name of account, ledger follow, then debit balance or credit balance whatever it is of the account shows and then the total debit side and credit side. And the debit, total of the debit balance column must tally with the credit balance column and total of the debit total column should tally with the, the same amount of uh, credit total column. But in uh, practice, in real life, only the first method is used that is the balance method. So, if you see any book, anything, any uh, accounting books, you will find this format, debit balance and 
credit balance. So, name of the account debit balance and credit balance. So, this format is used. So, thus there are the three methods of preparing the trial balance. Methods are very easy. Just we need to record the ledger account name and their balance. Now, uh, we would like to see uh, a, a, an example. <coughs> this trial balance is given and uh, in this trial balance, uh, the different accounts have been shown with their balances. Cash account, bank account, bills payable account, Jakir's account, stock account, Robin and their balance. If the balance is debit, then debit side and if the balance is credit, then credit side. So, uh, this is a uh, specimen with the imaginary figures and the total of both the sides is being tallied. Now, this is the very important point that how to prepare a correct trial balance. Many times if a new accountant, an experienced accountant has prepared the trial balance, it may be tallied, but it may be wrong. So, a senior person from accounts department had to check it. Sometimes the trial balance may not be tallied. So, if the trial balance is not tallied or trial balance is incorrect. So, you need to check it and prepare a correct trial balance. So, what are the important rules which you should keep in mind while preparing a correct trial balance? Number one first point is relating to assets. Assets we know that the assets are have the value for the firm and as per rules of debit and credit increase in asset is debited. So, they will show the debit balance. So, all the assets account always have the debit balance. So, their balance should be shown on the debit column of the trial balance. So, if by mistake, by error, if the balance is given on the credit side, it means it is incorrect or wrong. And uh, we could check from the ledger accounts what is the error and we could correct it. Then second is liabilities. All the liabilities always have the credit balance. As per rules of debit and credit, increase in liabilities, credit, decrease in liability, debit. So, liabilities either have a nil balance or the credit balance. So, their balance should be shown on the credit column of the trial balance. Capital account, normally capital account has a credit balance if otherwise any direct information is not given. Because the capital account will show debit balance only in a case when it is a overdrawn by the owner or the partners or their losses are more than their capital. So, when the losses are written off through the capital account, it will show the debit balance. So, uh, normally capital account will show the credit balance. Then uh, uh, next is drawings account. Drawings account, we know that drawings account is prepared for the cash or the goods withdrawn by the proprietor from the firm for his personal use. So, whenever we do record the drawings, the drawings account is debited. So, it always show a debit balance. So, we could check in the trial balance whether the drawings account is showing debit balance or not. If it is showing the credit balance, it means there is some error and we could check it. Next is all expenses and losses. As per the nature of the accounts, accounts are divided into the three categories, personal account, real account and nominal account. So, the nominal accounts includes expenses and incomes and for expenses there is a rule debit all expenses and losses. So, the all expenses and loss account have a debit balance and it should be shown on the debit column of the trial balance. So, similarly all income and gains they are to be credited. So, they should be shown on the credit side column of the trial balance. <clears throat> now, purchase and sales account, these are basically goods account, purchase, sales, purchase return, sales return. But the purchase account and sales return account always show a debit balance, so it should be shown on the debit side of trial balance. And sales account and purchase return account, they always show the credit balance and they should be shown on the credit side of the trial balance. 
then uh, rent interest commission discount. These are such items which may be as an expense or which may be as income. So, most of the time we should try clarify this. If we are uh, creating a rent account, if it is an income then it rent account should be created as a rent received. And if it is a rent paid expense, so it should be created the rent paid. So, when the name of the account has been clearly defined, then there is no confusion. But if the account is not clearly defined by the accountant, so it may have either debit balance or credit balance. When rent account, interest account is showing the debit balance, so it is as a expense. When these accounts are showing a credit balance, it means these are the income. So, but uh, it is better to create a clear account, rent paid, rent received, interest paid, interest received, discount allowed, discount received, commission allowed or commission paid and commission received. So, when we write clearly, there will be no confusion because all expenses will have the debit balance and all incomes has the credit balance. So, if we keep in mind these points, so we could check any trial balance and if there is any error, uh, we can correct at our own also. Now, uh, I would like to explain uh, this preparing trial balance with the and help of this example. Uh, we are given here some uh, examples. So, they say this is a trial balance and it has been tallied. It is showing 1,22,900 and uh, the total of both the sides is being tallied. So, uh, it should be the correct, but when we check the account, we can notice it what is the problem. On the credit side, we are given capital account, fixtures, fixtures and furnitures. This is an asset and asset always have the debit balance. So, it has been wrongly placed on the credit side. Sales is income, it is fine. Debtors, debtors is an asset. So, assets must have the debit balance. So, debtor account should not be shown on credit side, it should be shown on the debit side interest received is income, it is credit, it is correct. Now, the item shown given on the debit side, uh, building account 30,000, building is an asset, machinery, it is okay, returns outward. Returns outward is basically the purchase return, the goods which we have returned to our suppliers. Purchase account has a debit balance while purchase return account has a credit balance. So, it should be shown on the credit side. Then bad debts is a loss, debit balance, cash, okay, discount received. Discount received is income, so it cannot have the debit balance, so it is wrong. Bank overdraft, bank overdraft is a liability <coughs> and uh, liabilities have a credit balance, so it is again wrongly shown. Creditors, creditors also a liability it should be shown on the credit side, purchase account, it is correctly disclosed on the debit side, purchase of goods. So, what we have noticed after analyzing and studying this on the basis of the basic rules of debit and credit, we could notice here that the some items have been wrongly placed. So, now we'll, we shall prepare a correct trial balance. This is the correct trial balance debit balance account on shown on the left side, building, machinery, bad debts, cash, purchases, fixtures, debtors and credit balances, capital, sales, interest received, returns outward, discount received, bank of draft, creditors. Total is tallied. So, the total is always tallied, but in the previous format, we noticed that this trial balance is not correct. So, uh, whenever you are doing any question, it is better for you to check the trial balance and see the trial balance is correct or not. Now, uh, as we could understood by this format also that the uh, Italy trial balance shows the all entries have been recorded correctly. What are the limitations of trial balance? Trial balance is not a conclusive proof of accuracy. This is a very popular statement. Conclusive proof of accuracy, it means that 
if the trial balance is tallied, it does not guarantee that there is no error in accounting books. It means that even after preparing a correct trial balance, there may be some errors. So, if trial balance agrees, then what? When it disagree, there will be error definitely. But even if it is agree, there may be some errors. One is error of complete omission. It means that by mistake, we have omitted to record a particular transaction completely. So, it will not affect debit or credit any side. Then errors of accounting principles. We have discussed in our initial lectures the accounting principles which are to be followed by an accountant. And if any accounting principle has been violated, just for example, an expense of revenue nature should be debited to expense account. But if it has been debited to any asset account or in other words it has been capitalized, then it is violation of accounting principles. So, such error is called error of accounting principle. Just for example, the repairs to machinery, it is the nominal expenses revenue nature. So, it should be debited to repairs to machinery account. But by mistake, the accountant has debited the machinery account. So, this machinery account value has been increased. So, it is a wrong. So, this is the error of accounting principle, but it does not affect the trial balance. There may be compensating errors, two errors which compensate each other, then errors in original book of entry, errors of commission, posting to wrong account and entry posted twice. We shall discuss these different type of errors in our next session. Thank you. In this session, we shall discuss accounting errors. In the last session, we concluded with that point that the if the trial balance is tallied, even then there may be some errors in our accounting. We know that we are human being and uh, errors may be committed. So, the accounting expert people has uh, on the basis of their experience have identified the different type of accounting errors uh, which may be committed by the accountants. And they have also suggested that how to detect the errors and how to rectify the errors. So, that the accounting system provides the true and fair information and timely information and correct. The people believe on it. So, uh, now errors means we know that any type of mistake done in while accounting either in the first process recording the business transactions or in the second step of accounting process that is posting into ledger. So, or preparing trial balance it may be also committed at that point. So, all these errors 
may be classified on the basis of their nature into four categories. These are errors of omission, errors of commission, compensating errors or errors of principles. Now, we shall start from errors of omission. Errors of omission means some omission. So, if a transaction has been omitted from recording in the books of accounts or original books, so it is an error of omission. Errors of omission further may be classified into two categories. The first one is the complete omission and the second is partial omission. Complete omission means a transaction is completely omitted from recording in the books of original entry. It means it has not been recorded in journal or subsidiary book, any book of original entry. Just for example, a customer has returned the goods and it has not been recorded in the sales return book while the stock goods has been included in the stock. So, it is the complete omission. In the routine life, uh, many such errors happens. Then partial omission. Partial omission is basically related to the second step in accounting process that uh, while making posting into the ledger. We know that when we pass a journal entry, just uh, for example, uh, cash received from RAM. So, the entry will be cash account debit to RAM's account and it will be posted into the cash account debit side and RAM's account credit side. But we posted this transaction into the cash account but by mistake we omitted to post it into the RAM's account. So, it is the partial omission. A transaction has been recorded, but while making posting only half part of it, one part has been posted, other is omitted. So, this is the partial omission. This error of partial omission will affect the trial balance. Trial balance may not be tallied if there is an error of partial omission. Then errors of commission. Errors of commissions are basically those errors which are relating to the wrong amount either in the books of original entry or in the ledger accounts or posting may be done on the wrong side or in wrong account. Just for example, the which we I told you just now that cash received from RAM. So, the posting is to be made on the credit side of RAM. Cash received is the suppose 2000 while making posting in RAM's account we recorded 20000. So, it is the error of the wrong amount although posting has been made in the correct account and on the correct side. Another possibility is that instead of crediting RAM's account we have credited Ramesh account. Amount is correct but account has been credited wrongly. And uh, <coughs> such error sometimes uh, just a careless while preparing the accounts and uh, ignorance uh, by the accounting staff. So, few more examples may be there. Goods sold for 4500 while recorded in sales book as rupees 5400. In this example, the digits has been exchanged. 4500, so uh, has been recorded as 5400. Next example, goods purchased from Manoj for rupees 2000 recorded properly in purchases book, but posted to the credit of Manoj account as rupees 200. So, the posting has been made into the correct account Manoj on the correct side, credit side, but amount is wrong. And then next example, sales return book has been overcast by rupees 500. Uh, we discussed preparing sales return book. All the goods returned by our customers are to be recorded in sales return book and uh, posting is made from that book. At the end of the month or a period, a specified period, the total is done and this total is posted into the sales return account. So, they say the sales return book has been overcast by 500. It means it is a totaling error. So, in 
routine life, there such errors are very common, overcasting or undercasting. Overcasting means the total is more than the actual amount and undercasting means the total is actually total recorded is the less while the actual total is the more. Then the goods returned by a customer has been recorded in purchase return book. Sometimes in hurriedly the clerk instead of post recording this transaction into the sales return book, he has recorded in the purchase return book. So the in the transaction may be recorded in the wrong book of a original entry, in the wrong account, wrong amount. So all these are the errors of commission. Most of such errors affects the trial balance. Then next is the compensatory errors. Sometimes there may be two or more errors which are committed in such a way that the effect of one error on the trial balance is cancelled by the other error. So trial balance is tallied but there are errors. So as the one error is compensating the effect of the other error, so we call them trans compensatory errors. They may be similar in nature but are of a similar account. Just for example, goods sold to RK Bhatia rupees 1000 and to KR Bhatia. So RK Bhatia and KR Bhatia for 2000. So the entry has been recorded in the sales book correctly but while making posting rupees 2000 was posted to RK Bhatia's account instead of 1000 and 1000 has been posted to KR Bhatia's account instead of 2000. So what we are noticing that the total amount to be debited uh, to be uh, debited is correct. So it will not affect the trial balance because one account has the error of 1000 has been compensated in the other account. Similarly, purchase book was undercast by rupees 2000 and sales return book was overcast by the same amount. So sales return book again the debit account debit balance purchase book debit balance. So purchase account has a debit balance it has been overcast 2000. So if we there is only one error then trial balance on the debit side should be 2000 more than the credit side. But the accountant has also committed another mistake in the sales return book and it has the sales return is the debit balance it has been overcast by rupees 2000. So the impact of one error has been compensated by other error. So these are called compensatory errors. Now the next category is errors of principles. We have studied certain accounting principles in starting classes like business entity concept which specifies that the capital account and drawings account should be maintained because the entity of the owner is distinct and separate from the business. Then uh, costing principle, revenue recognition principle, matching concept, so the many accounting principles are there and which we need to follow while preparing the accounting books. So sometimes the accounting principle may be violated. Some accountants may not have that much knowledge. So while recording the transaction, there may be some error. <coughs> so these errors are called errors of principles means errors of accounting principles or errors of violating the accounting principles. Commonly these errors are treating a revenue expense as capital expense or vice versa. So treating a revenue expense as capital expense like repairs to machinery it is the day to day expenses which is to be paid by the firm and it should be debited to the repairs to machinery account. While the accountant has debited the machinery account and machinery account is an asset account and which is increasing the 
cost of the machinery. So, this is the violation of accounting principle because according to accounting principles revenue expense should be charged as the revenue account and should be finally debited to the profit and loss account or trading account. Then uh, reverse a capital expense has been treated as revenue expense. For example, a firm has paid wages on the construction of its building and it has been debited to wages account. When we shall prepare the final account, we will see the wages account is shown on the debit side of trading account because wages are considered as the expense for manufacturing goods. While in this case, the wages are paid for construction of the building. So, they are not related to the goods. So, construction of building it is a capital nature expenditure and such expenditure should be debited to building account. So, uh, this is an error capital expense and it has been debited to wages account. So, uh, errors of principles are most common revenue expense wrongly treated as capital expense or capital expense wrongly treated as revenue expense vice versa. Now, we would see the errors from a different aspect. This aspect is the errors affecting the trial balance or errors not affecting the trial balance. There are certain errors if they have been committed then the trial balance shall be affected it will not be tallied. So, in this category we include such errors due to which the trial balance does not agree. Normally these are the errors affecting one side of account and we know that we are following double entry system. In double entry system the transactions are recorded in the two different accounts. If this is a partial omission or errors of commission it may affect the trial balance. So, we will discuss some such errors number one here omission of posting from cash book or any other subsidiary book to ledger accounts. When we prepare subsidiary books the one aspect is recorded in subsidiary books just for example, cash book. So, the cash aspect is recorded in cash book either cash received or cash paid. Other aspect is to be made posting into the ledger accounts of the affected party. So, when the posting from cash book or any other subsidiary book has been omitted, it is the one side error, it will affect only the one account. Next is errors in casting, casting is total, totaling. So, casting may be over casting or under casting. So, either in subsidiary book or in any ledger accounts we are making total. So, if the total is wrong then balance will be wrong and trial balance may not be tallied. So, this is one then errors in balancing the accounts. This is basically the mathematical errors which the people commit while uh, calculating the total or the balance is the wrong amount may be calculated. So, the wrong balance means the trial balance will not be tallied. Then when we carry forward the balances from one period to another period from one page to another page there may be error. This is all uh, such common human errors. Just for example, we calculated the balance rupees 13,000 in one account and which we need to carry on the next page. While carrying on the next page, we have recorded it 31,000 or we have recorded it 1300. So, it is a wrong. So, wrong balance has been carried forward. So, sometimes the balance is calculated correctly, but while carrying to the next page we forget some item and some figure or some digit and it is the wrong amount. So, <coughs> then there are some errors which does not affect do not affect the trial balance. Complete omission in transaction not recorded in the books of original entry. 
goods sold but not recorded goods sold on credit basis because if it is a cash basis at the end of the day you could notice the cash is exceeding and so it means you have forget or omitted some transaction but when the goods sold uh, has been on goods sold in credit basis then it is not recorded so it is a complete omission then similarly uh, any other transaction purchased furniture on credit basis received the voucher also bill but not recorded so it is complete omission then compensatory errors just now we discussed the compensatory errors that error in one account compensates the error in other account and the effect on trial balance is cancelled so due to this nature these two or more errors are called compensatory errors then errors of principle in case of error of principle error is not in debiting or crediting debit is correct but in wrong account just for example the rupees 1000 paid for installation of a new machinery so it should be debited to the machinery account but instead of debiting to this machinery account this has been debited to wages account so the error is basically a capital expenditure has been treated as revenue expenditure so it is an error of principle so debit is correct so it will not affect the trial balance now recording wrong amount in the books of original entry wrong amount recorded so original entry means journal or subsidiary book so we recorded wrong amount so posting will also be the wrong it does not affect the trial balance like goods returned by kishan costing rupees 250 has been recorded in returns inward book as rupees 520 digits exchange okay then posting the correct amount on the correct side but to wrong account account uh, the posting has been made into the different account just for example goods sold to mr hari harrison for rupees 500 correctly entered in the sales book but while making posting it was posted to the debit of harkishan the similar name are there so this is there is a chance for error so while making posting we should uh, carefully see that the posting is made into the correct account after knowing these errors now the most important part is that detection of error we are human being so uh, we definitely may commit some errors so committing error is not that much uh, although there should be the least errors but we should also know as accountant how to detect the errors there are certain uh, points are there here which will help if you become a real accountant and uh, all these points are also given in the few books but uh, uh, by my actual experience while doing accounts i have seen this experienced these are definitely useful first is whenever you are processing that you noticed that the trial balance has not been tallied so first of all find out the balance what is the difference amount and then we should check so we should start from the trial balance first just now i discussed few minutes ago the preparing a correct trial balance so you could check by the different accounts and by their nature their balance should be debit or credit and it has been shown on the correct so uh, we could check it again that all balances from different ledgers account have been included in trial balance so with the help of one more person that one person will uh, speak out the name of different ledger account and their balance and one person can check the trial balance so the balance is recorded on the correct side creditors have a credit balance so we could check it whether it has not been wrongly recorded on the debit side if in place of a, a number of accounts only one account has been shown in trial balance 
normally in case of the debtors and creditors, a list of debtors and creditors is to be prepared. Because in the large concern, there is a separate ledger for debtors. It is called debtors ledger or sales ledger. And the separate book for the creditors, creditors ledger. So, when the list has been prepared, there is a possibility that some account has been omitted or some wrong amount has been shown in the list. So, please ensure and check that all the accounts of the debtors are included in debtors account and all the accounts for creditors are included in creditors list and their totals are also correct. <coughs> then locating the errors basically, when we want to detect these errors, these are in the posting error. The transaction of the amounts equal to difference should be specifically checked. For example, there is a difference of rupees 12,000. So, when there is a difference of 12,000, so first check all transactions of rupees 12,000 because there is a possibility of rupees 12,000 error directly you could find out straight away. If you are unable to find error by the difference amount, then another trick you can use make the half of the difference. For example, difference is for 12,000 then divide it by 2, 6,000. Now, you should check the all transactions of rupees of rupee 6,000. This 6000, why we are checking for 6000? Because if the posting is made on wrong side, then the difference amount doubles. Just for example, I have paid rupees 6000 to Mr. Ram, so I have to debit Ram's account by 6000. While making posting into ledger, instead of debiting Ram's account, we have credited the Ram's account for 6000. So, now the balance of the RAM will show a difference of rupees 12,000. So, the first idea is find out the balance, check the transaction of the amount similar to balance, then divide the difference amount by 2 and then check the different uh, uh, transactions of that amount. Then another trick can be used if the difference is divisible by 9. If difference is divisible by 9 like just 2700, rupees 2700 the difference is divisible by 9. So, when the difference is divisible by 9, there is a possibility of digit exchange. For example, here 275 is recorded as 257. So, it will cre has created a difference of rupees 18 and this 18 is divisible by 9. If rupees 27 has been recorded as 72, if 27 has been recorded as 72, the difference is rupees 45 and this difference is divisible by 9. So, you could uh, notice it that whenever there is an exchange of two digits, the difference will be divisible by 9. Sometimes there are the error by a 0, rupees 100 has been recorded as 10, one 0 omitted by you. So, difference is for 90 rupees, so 90 it is divisible by 9. So, if the difference is, this difference is divisible by 9, so there are the two possibility, one for the exchange of digits, another possibility is omission or addition of a 0 shunya. Sometimes the difference may be uh, rupees 100, rupees 1000, rupees 10,000 and so on. Then, then there is a possibility that there is an error either in totaling or carrying forward the total of a subsidiary books to ledger accounts. <clears throat> then difference by large amount, very huge amount is there. So, we know that the huge amount suppose rupees 20 lakhs and for me large enough and 20 lakhs comes only in purchase and sales account not in any other for example. 
it means that there is a chance of that error has been made either in purchase or sale. So, uh, on the basis of your experience and practice, you could sense that okay, what, which are the common accounts where the errors are made by the accountants or this error may be relating to a which particular account and it comes only by experience and you sharply observe them. I have done some accounting in my life. So, my senior people told me all these tricks to use. If there is a balance of rupees 10,000, so he asked me to check the total again and we could notice it that it was a totaling error. So, when difference was divisible, then he asked to check the digits that whether there is a digit of exchange of digits. So, uh, the detection of error is very important for an accountant because we cannot carry with the errors. Some other measures may be used. It should be checked that cash and bank balances have been written in trial balance. Sometimes it may be omitted because the cash and bank, cash book and bank book is separate. Then the while preparing trial balance only ledger balance are included. Ledger account should be balanced again if uh, you are unable to find out by all the methods which I have explained. Then uh, you can, you have to check it the whether balances have been taken correctly. Totaling of subsidiary books, there may be error in totaling and posting of subsidiary books. <coughs> so, uh, these are the some uh, idea methods which you can use to detect the errors. So, we have today discussed how to detect error, what are the different types of errors and in a separate lecture we shall discuss, explain how to rectify these errors in accounting books. Thank you. With this note, thank you sir. Thank you so very much. Uh, dear friends, uh, if you want to give your feedback regarding this lecture or if you ha have any questions to be asked, then you can mail us at info.cc at the rate nic.in. Dear friends, we will be meeting again very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye.